Good morning, viewers, and welcome to Market Insights. I am Lovina Emma. Today, we are exploring the transformative potential of the Lagos Calabar Highway. Now, this is a critical project that has poised to revitalize Nigeria's economy, and this monumental infrastructure undertaking is more than just a road. It is a catalyst for growth, a lifeline for businesses, and a symbol of our nation's determination to progress. Nigeria's 700-kilometer Lagos to Calabar Coastal Highway will connect Nigeria's commercial hub to the eastern regions of the country, and this will unlock vast economic opportunities. But what does this mean for business investors and the nation's growth trajectory? Now, let's picture this scenario. Imagine a seamless journey from the bustling metropolis of Lagos to the serene shores of Calabar. No more traffic jams, no more delays, just a smooth and efficient route. I mean, for everybody traveling by road interstate, that's something we will all look forward to because um, before the completion of this road, people who are traveling from Lagos to Calabar spend over 14 hours by road. I mean, that is quite a long time. I mean, pretty much the whole day spent on this route. So this um, journey, once the road is completed, will just take seven hours. And that's something every traveler will be looking forward to spending a shorter time traveling by road. So this isn't just a dream because very soon it will become a reality. But why is this highway so crucial? And I'll tell you this, for starters, it will significantly reduce transportation costs for businesses operating along that corridor. Goods and services can can move faster, cheaper, and reliably. So this means lower prices for consumers, increased exports, which is something we also want, and it also boosts our local economy. Beyond that, the highway will open up vast tracts of land development, new industries, businesses, and residential areas. I can imagine new estates springing up along the routes. I mean, that's something we want, and also a lot of property developers coming there opening up that entire region to more opportunities. So it's going to attract lots of opportunities from foreign investors, diversify our economy, and of course, building a highway of this scale is definitely a complex undertaking. So there will be challenges to overcome, such as the environmental concerns, I mean, local resistance, but the potential rewards far outweigh the risk. And this is a project that will benefit generations to come. So join me on today's episode of Market Insights as we talk about the impact of the Lagos to Calabar Highway on our economy. We'll be discussing this with two guests. I have one joining me in the studio and another one joining us virtually. So I will introduce them after the break. <music> Thank you for watching the program. So we have two guests joining us in the studio. One is virtually and the other one is physically here with me in the studio. So I will first of all introduce the guest in the studio and his name is Dr. Taiwo Olufemi Salam and he's a transportation expert. He's also the head of department for transportation at the at the Aviation School, at the Lagos Transportation Technology and Infrastructure School, Lagos State University. And he's also um, a member of the Institute of Transports, a member of Chartered Institute of Transports in London, member of the Institute of Commerce also in London, member of the Transportation Engineers in the United States of America. So he's a well-rounded transportation and infrastructure expert. And we also have another guest who has joined us virtually, and his name is Feyi Ogunkule. He's an IT professional and a public policy analyst. So welcome gentlemen to the program Markets Insights. To have you both on the program. Okay, so um, let me start with um, Mr. Salam this morning. Thank you so much for being in the studio with us. Thank you. Okay, first Thank of all, um, now, the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, during my introduction, I talked about how this is a new development, a very huge undertaking, infrastructure undertaking by our government. So now, how would this coastal highway transform our nation's economy? Okay, uh, before you talk of the economy of the coastal road, which we also know as Lagos Calabar Road, uh, I remember in 2016, we have Ambassador Kishi, who was the chairman of Brace Commission. 
Brace means Bayesa, Rivers, Aquaibon, Cross River, Edo, and Delta. So we continue having meetings all along on how to have coastal road and link south to south with the southwest or with Lagos. And uh, looking at Lagos, Poracourt, Abuja. <clears throat> Everybody go to Abuja to go and get contract. They go to Paracot to go and lift oil, and they come to Lagos for the marketing and selling and distribution of this oil. So Lagos Calabar started from there. But if, if you see the way I was mentioning it, Undo, Ogun, and Lagos were not embraced. But when they now realize that even when they do everything, they still need that point, the pointer thing is that they have to come to Lagos for the economy value of that corridor. So that is how they were able to come up with the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road. Initially, it was five lanes on each side with rail in the middle. And we also have the width of the road was 90 meters. But because of the encroachment and many other things, it has reduced to 50 meters in some area, especially in Lagos Axis. That of Lagos Axis of Lagos Calabar is divided into three, from ground zero, that is uh, Amadu Belu, to Eleko, from Eleko to Dangote Fertilizer, and from Dangote Fertilizer to uh, 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 that is a uh, Odomi or something like that there. That is where it ends up. And the total length is 103 kilometers, of which the Mr. Uh, the Honorable Minister has said that by May next year is going to come up. The last time I look at them, they have reached Chakonde. I don't know where they are now. So that is the situation. So when we now come to the economic, you see, infrastructure breed economics. The economics, they divide transportation as derived demand. You need it to be able to demand transport, to be able to achieve what you need. Uh, with the transportant, we look at transportation and we say that transportation build economics. And that is exactly what is going to happen along that coastal road. Uh, people continue saying 700 kilometers, 731 kilometers, the total length from ground zero to Calabar is 776 kilometers. 776 kilometers, and it spans from Lagos going to Ogun, moving down to uh, uh, Ondo. From Ondo, it goes to Delta. From Delta, that is Sapele, Wari, it goes to Bayesa, to Poracot, and from Poracot, across to Akwaibon and to Calabar. Okay. Um, thank you for sharing all this with us, starting from how this project was conceived. And, yes, yes um, I think I'll be the technical to aspect of it. Yes, need to know how this project was conceived and Yes, um, how it definitely benefits our economy. Now, we've, you've stated how the journey will proceed from Lagos State all the way before they finally get to the last destination right, in Calabar, right, which is right. what um, our viewers want to hear. Now, I'm um, looking at all of this. We know that passing through all these states, there are going mm. to be there are people living there, and definitely there will be lots of opportunities available to these people with this kind of projects mm. now. Mm. So now, um, how... Will this first of all before I come to you? Let me just speak with my guest virtually. Um, Feyi Ogunkule, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you clearly. That's good to hear. Lovina. Okay, now, um, looking at um, yes, uh, Mr. Salam has shared um, the history of this project, how it was conceived. Now, he also mentioned um, how it will pass through the states, it will pass through, and you know, there are lots of communities in all these states and this is a very huge project so how are people going to um how are the people in these communities especially in the rural areas going to benefit from this huge project uh, thank you very much lavina uh 
like Dr. Dr. Rightly said, uh, whenever there is a road construction or ways, whenever there is a road project, uh, you find out that it opens uh, up communities. And one of the goals or uh, purpose of this uh, greenfield project, because it's, it's a greenfield project, is for it to connect communities and facilitate trade. Now, uh, when it comes to those communities, I, I want to give you an instance. Uh, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, when it branched out at the interchange going to Abe Okuta, uh, you see that a lot of communities and a lot of businesses have sprung up in that access. So when, the same way, when you look at a, a road that is over 700 and uh, 700 kilometers, it's going to open up the communities. It will facilitate trade. I've traveled along this axis before, and I've seen how agricultural products, uh, 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 manpower for, for jobs, for farm, for skilled and unskilled, are just lying waste in some of these communities. You have a road like this, it's going to open up all the communities. Uh, uh, and definitely there will be jobs. There will be jobs, uh, real estate, like you rightly said at the beginning. Uh, I, I live in Abeokuta. My office is in Ilokweju. Between my office and my house is just one and a half hours. Now, imagine you having an expressway that there's no traffic and it's smooth. It's going to open up all these communities that are either though, uh, obscure. It's going to put them in the public light. And there will be migration. A lot of people are going, to, they are going to move out of Lagos because now some communities that don't even have power. You see that power will get to those communities when there is road, uh, farmland will come, industries will come around, and it's going to definitely open up the communities and it's better for everybody. Thank you. Hey, um, thank you for that, Faye. Yes, um, more welcome developments, like you have said. But, um, you know, with this kind of huge projects, you know, um, definitely everybody will have one thing or the other. There will be critics who will have something to say about this type of project. So um, now looking at this scenario, you know, initially some properties had to be demolished before the project was um, carried out. So yes, it was all for the good of the, the larger good, as we, as we always say, for, for the greater good. But looking at this whole scenario, do you really think that um, in the long term, this project can be definitely be maintained by all the parties, all the actors involved? Okay, uh, thank you, Lavina. Now, when you are doing a project of this scale, uh, there's no way uh, properties won't be demolished. Okay, right from ground zero at Ahmad Beloe, we saw that the, we saw the impact on a landmark beach, and a lot of other beaches have been have been have been have been demolished. A lot of properties have been demolished, and more we still have to go. Aside from uh, properties, you are going to see a lot of farmlands, uh, forest, a lot of deforestation uh, taking place. So in the short term, in the immediate, a lot of people are going to, of course, there will be communities that will spring up along the line that will, the government will need to sit down and talk with. I've, I've been part of projects before, and in some parts of the country, we, the communities came out and they tell you, you come forward unless you do this, this, and that. Okay, so uh, yes, not everybody will be happy. However, I believe that the government should adequately compensate those whose lands and um, properties have been demolished. Aside that, you know, like I said earlier, uh, a lot of deforestation will take place. And when we are talking about the SDGs, under SDG, I think, 11, uh, talking about sustainable cities and communities, I believe that uh, a lot of reforestation needs to take place. We've not seen the government's plan vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, reforestation. We know a lot of forests will go and communities will come out and protest. It's, it's inevitable, okay? However, it depends on how the government will manage it. And I believe that they have to put in place mechanisms to adequately compensate 
these communities and individuals that are rightly aggrieved. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Feyi Ogunkunle. Okay, let me move to Dr. Olufemi Salami, Dr. Taiwo Olufemi Salami. Now, um, we heard what um, Feyi Ogunkunle said. So I want to ask you now, what are the potential environmental and social impacts of this highway construction? Okay, uh, just in addition to what Feyi uh, has said, you see, the alignment is there. It's people that are going into the alignment. The alignment is there. All these ones they are moving, they don't have approval. The alignments are there. It's the people encroaching into the alignment. So that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is that the community, they continue selling lands without reference to the physical planning and lands bureau, whether it is government acquired or it is excise. So that's another problem they have it. Now, what are the social, political environment now? Let us take the social, political. You will see the cultural exchange will come up, will come up. Because it takes only seven hours, eight hours to get from Calabar to Lagos. So instead of you to go 14, 15 hours to get to Lagos, it's faster to move to Lagos. I can go to Calabar and marry. They can come from Calabar, Akwai Bonnie, and marry in Lagos. And there are many other things that can take place. That's one aspect of it. We can also have cultural exchange of our of our culture easily. Then when you look at the economic value. You have iron benders, you have carpenters, you have bricklayers, and you have many people like that. And you also have suppliers. You have direct job and indirect job. What about the food sellers? They will come around, they want to sell, they want to do this, they want to do that. Now, another area I want you to look at is that along this corridor, there are many houses springing up, including estates. The cost of building estate there it will be the same as the color of business estate at Alimosho, but when it comes to rentage, it will be cheaper at Alimosho, but expensive there. Why? It's because of the road, the infrastructures that are available. Land also will be expensive along that corridor. You can see that. And uh, there are, then, just as she has said, many uh, farm produ products produce will be able to have access to the road. And what they brought out from farm today, we can eat it in Lagos tomorrow. If we can have it today in Lagos. So these are the things, and things will be expensive, that they will now have their agricultural produce that they cannot have access to take out of the farm. That is zero now. In fact, this is a game changer. This infrastructure is a game changer. And when they finish that of Lagos Sokoto through, linking the southwest with the northwest, that's going to be another super infrastructure, just as we have in Lagos Calabar. Then don't forget they are going, it's going they are going to toll it. So it's going to create job. It's going to create job for the people that are going to toll it. And uh, then if you look at uh, from Maryland in US, to New York, there is a there is a uh, turnpike road that once you enter it, you now have access to go out into each settlement. The next settlement you get to, or the next time you get to, there will be an egress to take you out, and there will be an ingress to take you in. What happened there? You have a shops, professional shops. You can take tea. You can have lunch. You can rest, rest in place at there. Then along the corridor as well, you're going to have petrol stations, and people are going to work at those petrol stations. So you're going to have towing vehicles. You're going to have a lot of things like that that are people are. Going. So it's going to create both direct and indirect jobs. That's something we would definitely be looking forward to creating more job opportunities. It's a thing that we cannot wait for. Yes. Definitely, we can't wait for it. But there was something you mentioned. Yes, you said the communities around there. Yes, the, as 
estates are springing up definitely um you know the communities want to sell land to these property developers and in that kind of situation you don't know which ones have been um earmarked to be demolished because of this construction and you don't know which ones have been sold so how can the government because in that kind of case you know where the land has already been sold to you and then you say oh it's my land this is the title i have for it but they will tell you no you were not supposed to get approval for this land. So how can the government ensure that these cases don't happen, especially with the projects of this magnitude? You see, in, uh, in government or in law, there is an idea that says that there is no ignorance in law. There are steps. But because people also want to cut corners, they create problems for themselves. If you sell me land now, I need to go straight to survey it. So the general's office to go and check whether the land is free of acquisition or not. Once I have my certificate that it's free of acquisition and then move to lands to go and process my land certificate. Once I have my CFO, even if you want to have access to my land, you pay me. If I bought the land 50 million and you want to have access to my land, you have to evaluate, you have to value the land at the current price. If the price is 500 million, you pay 500 million. For all, um, so th that is an aspect of it. Then another area of it is that people will just say, okay, let us start building. Government may not even start tomorrow. Government, may, who knows that this present government will go and start Lagos Coastal Road, will be on it for the past 24 years. We've been on Coastal Road for the past 24 years. And the first thing the government said was that they are going to start coastal road. And before you know it, the coastal road has started. The alignment has been there for over 24 years. You see, people continue doing, if you look at Lekki to Eleko and to Ekwe, there is a green line coming up there. And people are encroaching on that green line. And that alignment has been there. You cannot escape it. It's 75 kilometers. I mean, 75 meters width. You cannot. But people continue encroaching, encroaching, encroaching. So should government now leave them when they are encroaching? When there are rules and regulations that if you want to do this, these are the steps you have to follow. If you want to do this, these are the steps you have to follow. So let people go and follow the steps. Government will compensate them. But the question is overriding public interest. You can't tell this to people of Calabar and people from Aqua Ibon that uh, what is going to happen there because they are waiting for the project to even start if it is possible for them tomorrow. So that's the issue. Okay, okay. Well, these are issues that keep springing up because we keep hearing of them. But thank you for addressing this matter very well. And um, yeah, so now, so going forward on this, um, Dr. Salam, I want to ask you now, how can transportation networks be improved to aid productivity in businesses, especially in Lagos State that has been affected by severe traffic congestion? Yes, if you look at Lagos State, Lagos State has started what we call Strategic Transportation Master Plan by LAMATA. Lagos State has also brought in policy transport policy, the only state that has got transport policy in this state. So, uh, you can see that they have red line, they have blue line, they have green line, they have brown line, all are now connected. Once they are all ready, you're going to see that definitely there are going to be very fewer cars on the road. If you look at the blue line, oh really, to my two now, vehicles are very, very few because people are using the blue line, but when they get to my two dispersing, then they continue having that issue. Okay, um, I'll get back to you on this, Dr. Salam. Um, Feyo Gunkule, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Lavina. Okay, I'm glad you're here with us. Okay, now, um, do you think this project, the Lagos to Calabar Highway, do you think this is the most um transformative project that the Nigerian government has undertaken? Yeah, I I believe so. Uh, so, if you look at this project on looking at the cost implication, for instance, I I I, I was looking at this project and I found out that in Africa, for instance, this is the fifth largest single project that followed by it follows uh, Dangote refinery. 
Now, as of today, it is estimated that this is going to be uh, 15 trillion. That is the largest that any government in Nigeria has ever done. And when you talk about uh, transformation, looking at the states this uh, coastal roads cost across, uh, out of the at least 10, 12 uh, economic, industrial and economic hubs we have in Nigeria, you will see that this road cuts across about six of them. Uh, let's take them, let's take some of them. Uh, we have the Lagos Oko Industrial uh, Axis. That is the economic powerhouse of the country. Uh, we have the Akure. Uh, it's an emerging tech and agro, agro industrial hub. We have the Onicha Axis, which is the commercial gateway for Eastern Nigeria. We have Aba, okay? It's gonna to to get to the, the, that. It will be easier for, from this road to get to Aba. And that is the hub for small scale manufacturing. You have the oil and gas hub, which is the Potakot, and you have uh, Calabar. Calabar is a tourism and export processing hub. You have the export processing of the uh, zone in Calabar, and you have the Calabar free trade zone. So. It's, it's going to affect its, the, the GDP of the country tremendously. Because when these hubs, that hit that too, because when you look at, like, like doctor said, everybody is trying to get to Lagos in one way or the other. Bring it down, whether for the market in Lagos or for export purposes. It will be easier for them to move their goods and services to Lagos. So it's a game changer, and it's going to impact positively uh, on the economy of the country. Okay. Okay. Now, do you think this um, this highway project can bridge the gap between the rural and urban areas across all the states that it will be passing through? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's like like we said earlier. Uh, I have people that have like a data group. They have cashew nuts. Let's talk about trade now. They have they have cashew nut plantation to get it to Lagos now. It's several hours and it costs a lot. Now, if they are getting to Lagos on this highway, it's going to be shorter. Probably in four hours they are in Lagos. They are in Lagos. So, and there are several communities that will be opened up. Businesses will come, real estate will come, uh, rent will definitely go up in some of these communities. And the people will keep moving further and further. Okay, uh, culturally, uh, it's going to expose this, uh, give people access to to culture. Look at look at Calabar, for instance. There's the Tinapa, the, there's Tinapa Resort there. That as as of today, it's lying, it's comatose. With this road coming up, you it will be easy for me, uh, like uh, doctor said. I can go from here to go and marry. I can go from here to go to a resort in Tinapa. It will be easier for me to go to uh, Obudu. It will be easier for us to go to uh, the annual uh, Calabar Carnival. So it's going to open up all the villages and communities along that axis to, to, to a lot of business and commercial activities. Okay. Okay. Yes. And we're, we are looking forward to that. But, you know, when I was saying to bridge the gap, as you know, a lot of rural communities are being affected by things like proper electrification, um, having connection, like network connection problems, that's for telecommunication, those issues are there. And also healthcare services, education services also. So most rural communities are affected by these things. So with this kind of project, um, Hopefully, I want to get your thoughts on this, that there will be that though perhaps they can be at par with what we have at the urban center. So I want to hear your thoughts on this. Oh, OK, thank you. So let's take telecommunications, for instance. Uh, some routes along this axis, not some, a lot of routes along this axis, many of the telecos who, uh, as of today don't have infrastructure along that, along that line. Why? If you look at the cost to benefit, why will I put uh, a, a base station in a community where uh, we, 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 can't, we can't make anything from that as this? 
Now, as these communities are opening up, more people will move to these communities. As more people move to these communities, the, the businesses uh, like banks, for instance, like telcos, for instance, they too will start having uh, uh, footprints along this line because now they know that, yes, uh, they can make something along this axis. And like the Honorable Minister said, along this line also, uh, there will be uh, CCTVs, CCTVs uh, that the government will use. We need internet. Internet will come from the telcos. So, and when you are servicing, you can't service just the, the, the government alone. This is going to spill to, to the communities. And this infrastructure will need power. So, this means that uh, electricity lines will, will start springing up and these communities will be powered. And when you power communities, Businesses will come. Uh, those that are bringing cassava, uh, tra transmitting, uh, transporting their cassava several kilometers to, to processing plants will have processing uh, plants easy at, at, at their doorstep and they can process and bring a finished product to Lagos. So it's going to open, it's a game changer. It's, it, it's more than a road project. It's, it's, it's going to change the lifestyle of people around these communities. I talked about that with projects of this magnitude, I will start with Dr. Salam. There'll be key challenges involved with this. So now, Dr. Salam, what kind of key challenges will be involved in constructing a highway of this scale, like key challenges and also the disadvantages of this kind of projects? Your thoughts on this? Yes. Uh, one of the key challenges is uh, land acquisition, recovering the alignment which is going to be very difficult now because when you look at billions of dollars of houses springing up, the high rise is there. Are you going to destroy them? So what you have to do is that you have to veer away from them to be, you have to realign again. And when you are realigning, don't forget you are going to another people's land again that are not there and they need to be compensated. So one of the challenges is realignment compensation, and then it will also, before you can realign and do compensation and do everything before you can be allowed to move, you have to pay. And this will reduce the timing of what you want to do. Don't forget in Lagos and beyond up to Calabar, there are some areas that are spiritual areas that you have to realign that you cannot say you want to take the road to. So you have to realize. Dangote is having the same problem. Uh, in fencing is a, ref a refinery. There is what they call Diluja there. It cannot fence that area because on yearly basis, it's just a tree. On yearly basis, they have to worship that Diluja, that shrine. And it cannot cover it because if it covers the whole of Dangote, it will be like a, a day dream. So these are the challenges that are there. now. What are the disadvantages of road construction like many other? This is going to be a new road that are springing up. One, accident. Because people will be splitting anyhow. And all the areas, all the villages and other areas that are linked to it, they have to make sure they protect the children and the elders. If not so, if they want to cross, there are going to be issues. Then, have they done the traffic impact assessment? What about the environmental impact assessment of that area? Very, very crucial, those two. The environmental impact assessment of that area and the traffic impact assessment of that area. And many of them, let me allow you. Okay, okay, yes, well said. Um... Dr. Salam, thank you for that. Okay, let me move to Feiyi Ogunkule now. Um, we've heard what Dr. Salam has said with the challenges con with this kind of project. They're very huge challenges, especially with um, getting all the necessary um, officers like our traffic road transportation officers, traffic transportation management also for a project of this scale and having to ensure that um, drivers on this route obey all this traffic rules and regulations to avoid accidents but we know these things will still happen because um it's just part of human nature but i want to hear your thoughts on this on how we can overcome these challenges to ensure that this projects will um, be more of a blessing to us than something that will cause havoc 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lavina. Uh, like Dr. Rightly said, and like you said, a project of this magnitude, opening up several communities. In some of these communities, they've not even seen uh, vehicles like this, like this. So it's, it's uh, and like the minister said, uh, uh, they are going to put measures in place, though we've not seen. He said they, they, there will be measures in place to check uh, uh, speed limiting. Uh, like you have in Lagos now, you have, even from your Google map, Google, the Google map app, it will tell you in this area, there is a, a, a speed camera that, that's looking at you. Uh, probably they're going to have stuff like that along that axis. Uh, and they need to educate the people along that address. You, you can't just be crossing the road. The, the vehicles are faster than than you think, and uh, people need to be they, they need to be reorientation. Uh, like doctor said, we are we are experiencing the same the same kind of activities on this Lagos Ibadan Expressway. We have people uh, drivers run beyond the normal speed limit. And it's it's a serious issue. Now, uh, aside from that, uh, there are other issues that are like, like I mentioned earlier that has to do with uh, deforestation. Okay, a lot of like I said, this is a green field, uh, and it's going to pass through swamps. It's going to pass through terrains that are difficult and harsh. Okay, however, it behoves of the government to put in place if we are going to fail. Uh, 10,000, 100,000 trees along this to miss work. Okay, what are we going to do to make sure that we, we put uh, new trees in place? Like I was telling someone two days ago, uh, if I wear in the shoes, uh, we are going to line this road. We've seen uh, greenfield uh, projects in different parts of, the, parts of the world that are built ground up that are planned like this. So along the yeah. along the, the, the road, you make sure that you, you plant, there will be reforestation along the line to, 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 to meet the sustainable development goals. So uh, yeah, there'll be problems. Uh, I believe that there's no problem without a solution and the government should engage the communities. The government has said that this project will, will, will happen in, within eight years. Uh, I doubt that. Like doctor said, there will be communities that you need to sit down, negotiate. They will stop. They will, they will need to stop you for for several months, okay, uh, for you to negotiate with them and come to terms, say to them uh, one way or the other. Some diversions that need to take place. So we are looking at uh, maybe another two years or more being added to this. That is one of the challenges you are going to experience along this line. And you know there will be several bridges along this line. Not everything is a straight road. There will be several bridges, and when you are doing bridges, you know there will be there will be challenges also. I believe that, like Doctor said, uh, an environmental impact assessment has been conducted. Uh, definitely, some funds have been released for that, and I believe that it should be followed to the letter. Thank you very much. Yes, Faye, still on you. Um, now, how can this highway projects be integrated um, with other transportation infrastructure projects in Nigeria? Okay, now, uh, when, you, when you are talking about other transport projects, let's look at the route that that uh, road is going to pass through. Okay, so it's going to pass through Lagos. Uh, then towards Shagam, Ijebu, the axis is going to enter Ondo uh, around the Uberi axis. It's going to cross to uh, Edo Owena. Now it's going to go through uh, Benin City down towards uh, Sapele, towards Wari, towards it goes to Delta. Then you go to Bayelsa, Yenagua, as Otwoke axis. Then from there it will enter rivers. And then to Kotakwene in Akwaibom before landing at, at Calabar. So it's going to open up all these communities. And yeah, it's going to integrate. Now, if you look at that axis, there is the, the rail lines already planned or some are in, in place 
there is one from Potakot going through uh, Makodi to Maiduguri. Okay, so that will integrate into it. There is one that passes through uh, Wari up to Adenebode, Edo, Tokogi, to Ajaokuta. This is going to integrate, it's going to enter into that, it's going to feed into that system also. So uh, I believe from, from the initial uh, plan of this road, there is going to be, there ought to be a real system. That was the initial plan. It was meant to be the brace, it was meant to be a real system. Now, from what we are seeing, uh, we are not seeing any, any at least from uh, the beginning in Lagos State, we are not seeing any real system. We don't know whether maybe at, at the front there will be real system. If that is, then we're looking at an inter intermodal transport system. And this, I believe uh, there's an airport also uh, along that lucky affair axis that Lagos State is, is that Lagos State will be building along that axis. So it's going to open up and feed into several uh, means and other types of transport uh, systems. Thank you. Thank you for that, Faye Yogunkule. Okay, so um, before we round up the program now, um, let me just speak just lastly, um, Dr. Salam. Yes, now how can this project attract more foreign investment to make the country uh, more competitive internationally? Yes, from the name Costa Road, you can see most of the states, they have a lagoon very close to it. They can have ferry services to link it up or they will build roads that will connect it and people can take from that road to ferry services and go beyond. That is one aspect that the modes can be integrated. Another area, if you look at Lagos, just as he has already said, uh, we have green line that's going to link it up. The green line also go to the Lagos Airport. Don't forget along the corridor the, of the coastal road, we have Dangote, we have Chinese, we have a lucky free trade zone, and beyond like that. that will, so you can be in Aqua Ibom and give a call that your container are already in Lucky Deep Sea Port, that they should load it and send it to you without you coming to uh, Lucky Deep Sea Port. So these are the economic advantages of this thing all. Now, to now come to the foreign investment, we're going to have direct foreign investment along this corridor because most of the industries are going to come up along it because once their goods come out from Lucky Deep Sea Port, it goes straight into their own factory or their own industry. Not only in Lagos State, it's going to be like that in all other states too. So whenever you have infrastructure of this magnitude, just as we as well said at uh, Shagam, you can see Nestu. Nestu was at the Lupeju headquarter in Lagos. They move to Agbara. From Agbara, they move to Songo. From Songo, they are now at Shagamu. So you can see how they are progressing along as the infrastructures are also progressing. So that's going to, what's going to happen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much to our guests this morning, Dr. Taiwo Salam and also Feiyi Ogunkule for joining us on this discussion on the impacts of the Lagos Calabar Highway and how it's going to positively affect our country, especially um, transform the country economically. Many thanks for joining us on today's episode of Market Insights. And I do hope you can come again on the program. Thank you. Now let's look at the money markets much. this morning, um, the naira, the dollars, and the pound sterling, and how these currencies are, are faring. So we're looking at the Central Bank of Nigeria rates and the parallel market rates. So for today, Thursday, 10th of October, the dollar is currently selling at 1,657 naira to $1. That's at the CBN rates. The parallel market rate is 1,695 naira to $1. And the parallel market figures are higher than the Central Bank of Nigeria figures. For the pound sterling, at the CBN rate is 2,200 naira to 1 pound sterling. At the parallel market is 2,265 naira to 1 pound sterling. Also, the parallel market figures are higher than 
the CBN rates also. Now for the euro, it's selling at 1,845 naira to one euro. That's at the CBN rates. The parallel market rate is 1,860 naira to one euro. So those are our money market figures this morning. Thank you so much for watching the program Market Insights as we discuss the impacts of the Lagos Calabar Highway and how it's going to transform this country. I also want to thank my guests, Dr. Taiwo Salam and also Feyi Ogunkule for joining us on this discussion and sharing their insights into this matter. So this expanded access to rural communities has the potential to increase education, healthcare, create more jobs both directly and indirectly and contribute to Nigeria's long-term prosperity. Many thanks for watching the program. Do share your comments on all our social media platforms. I am your host, Lovina Emma. Stay tuned to the news update on Souk News Television.